Hi friends. Today we are going to discuss one of the important interview question with respect to mainframes. Uh, so the question is, uh, what are what are the different isolation levels in COPA? So uh, with respect to DB2, what are the different isolation levels? So there are four isolation levels basically. The first isolation level is uncompleted read, and the second is cursor stability. Third is read stability and fourth is repeatable read so u r c s r r s r r so these are the four um, isolation levels so with respect to uncommitted read basically what is mean by uncommitted read the uncommitted read is basically only used for reading the queries to read only uh, we use this uh, uncommitted read for read only queries basically Let, let's say you are trying to browse broad data then we we, we generally code you are with respect to that query. So here, no record locking is present. It, the query which we are performing, it will not perform any record locking on the table. So here, no locking is performed on the table. Okay. So we'll, uh, what happens here is we'll get uncompleted, uh, uncompleted data, basically. Let's say there are two people who are uh, trying to, uh, one is trying to browse the data, one is trying to select the data, one is trying to update the data. So uh, at the same time, if both the operation is, is performed, once the updated data is there, right, the, uh, the updated data we will not get here, basically. We will get uncommitted data. So even after that row is being updated by the other user, we will not get that, uh, that data, basically. Whatever the previous date, data is present, that, that only we will get here. That is why we call it this as uncommitted read. We are only using this uh, isolation for read only and we will get only uncompleted data. So the second user who is trying to uh, update the data for the same record will not get that uh, updated data basically, that committed data. That is the basic meaning with respect to this statement. We will see uncompleted changes by other transactions. So if there is one transaction which is updating our record which we are trying to fetch here, then the data will not get the updated data basically. This is only good for accessing read-only tables. Read-only tables is generally we go for read-only for broad uh, database browse. Whenever we are browsing broad database, then only we will go for read-only tables. Okay. The statements in UR which modify data uh, or upgrade internally changes to CS. This is one important point they, which they will ask in the interviews. So what does this meaning is basically if there is a state, uh, there is a query and it is an update query and the isolation level in the update query is UR. Okay. But we are updating some data with respect to update query. So basically what happens is even you mention UR, the DB2 will internally change this uh, UR isolation level to CS as we are updating data. No, it will change from UR to CS. That is the basic point here. So uh, uh, as there is no locking here, we cannot update data with respect to UR. So instead of uh, using UR, DB2 will internally change that to CS. Okay. This is the basic concept. Remember this point. They will be asking in interviews if even after you are telling all these three points, what is uncompleted uh, read? Basically, uncompleted read is used to browse the broad database. We will get uncompleted data even after the transaction update or second user is updating that record. Okay. So that is the basic point. Coming to cursor stability, cursor stability is the default isolation level. The question will ask, once you explain all these isolation levels, they will ask, what is the default isolation level? So remember this point, default isolation level is cursor stability. Okay. Default isolation level is cursor stability. So what does this cursor stability do is it locks only one row at a time. So if there is an update query, it is trying to update 10 rows. So during this 10 rows update, it will uh, it will lock only one record at a time. Once one record is updated then and committed, then it will go and try to update the second record. Once the second record is updated and committed, then it will go and pick the third record to update it. So in this manner, it will only lock one, one row at a time. It will never lock two rows at once. So that is the basic concept. Okay. It locks and unlocks each row at a time. Basically that is guaranteed return, which is committed at the time of the read. So when we are reading this, uh, we will get the committed data only. We will never get uncommitted data with respect to here. Okay. 
coming to read stability okay read stability is something like let's say there is a query and the query is able to pull 10 records from the query but the query is a cursor okay the cursor is trying to pull the data and uh, the cursor uh, with where condition uh, the satisfied rows are 10 rows okay here what happens with respect to read stability is it will uh, will uh, keep all qualifying rows locked until the transaction is completed so this 10 let's say the query is trying to pull 10 rows and it is trying to update or manipulate data with respect to this 10 rows so in this condition what happens when you give rs all these 10 rows will be locked the the where condition which is satisfying this 10 rows will be locked so what happens here is basically for future manipulation also we are holding data here so it, the locks, these 10 rows are locked basically. So we will keep all qualifying rows. Remember this point. We will keep all qualifying rows locked until the transaction is completed. So all the data manipulations are completed with respect to all 10 rows. Then only the lock will be released. So it will not lock one row. It will lock all the resultant rows of a query. Basically, if a query is pulling 10 records, then all 10 records will be locked. If query is trying to pull 20 records, all 20 records will be locked. Do, uh, does release the lo uh, locks on the rows th that do not satisfy the query. Let's say table is having 10,000 records, but the query is only trying to fetch uh, 10 records with respect to where condition. So only these 10 records will be locked. Remaining all uh, records will be uh, will not be locked. Basically, that is the basic meaning with respect to this statement. Use the result, result and set, uh, set uh, stability or whenever the, uh, basically why we are locking these 10 rows is all these 10 rows are required for future manipulation. So one of one, each record is fetched, some manipulation will happen on that data. Later on, it will go and try to fetch the other record. That record also required the manipulation. Due to that only, we will lock all the rows, resultant rows of the table. That is the read stability. Okay. Coming to repeatable read, we call this as dirty read because locks entire table in a unit of work. It locks the entire table. Whatever, even it is, uh, let's say, on a query, you give an RR. Okay. Even with respect to where condition, uh, it is trying to fetch only 10 records, but the lock will happen on whole table basically here all table is locked all no, the records all the records present in the table is locked so we will never use rr with respect to application programming whenever we code something we will never see a program logic with respect to rr as it is locking all the table records we will never use this type of and we call this as dirty read an application can retrieve and operate on rows in a table as many times as needed. However, the entire table is locked here. So this is the basic point. You should tell whenever they ask what is RR, you should, uh, the basic important point you should tell in the interview is here the entire table is locked. Entire table records are locked. It not just rows of that are retrieved because it is not the 10 rows which are we are trying to fetch, but the entire table is locked here. Until the unit of work is completed, no other application can update or insert or delete the rows in that table, in the affected table, basically. So this is an important topic with respect to RR. We should never use RR with respect to application programming. Okay. This is very, we call as dirty read and we should never use with respect to RR. This is the topic we are uh, discussing today. What are the four uh, isolation levels in DB2? Uh, what are its uses basically? So that's it friends. Thank you. We will meet you tomorrow again.